So in the last couple of videos I've done, I've tried to play off this Arctic Accelero on a 1080 Ti, just subtly in the background and hope that no one would notice. Actually, I did want to show it off just a little bit. Although a lot of you guys wanted to see how I installed this cooler on this card and also the before and after temperatures. So today I'm going to be testing it against the GTX 1080 Strix, which has a really good aftermarket cooling solution on it and it uses 100 watts less. So we're going to be putting this thing up against some of the best out there. And also on that note, I don't recommend pulling this off as it'll void your warranty. <laughs> And you really don't want to do that, but it's always cool to see things like this. So we've just pulled off the uh, Titan X reference cooler here. That's the GTX 1080. And you can see there's just so many uh, thermal pads there. And there's also these little ones here that relate to sort of other different uh, cooling. So what we've got here is I've already put the, or plastered the heat sinks on with a bit of heat sink plaster. And so that should be in place now. And I thought you guys might want to know how I'm thinking about going about this since a lot more people want me to explain things. So if we can see here, it's really a tight fit. We don't want to get the heat sinks anywhere near the little surface mount devices there, whether they be caps or resistors. Otherwise you will have a smoky graphics card. Uh, the memory, the GDDR5X memory, that's generally a simple affair. You just put it on, dab it on a little bit, dab, 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 drop the heat sinks on, and then you're ready to go. You can then plaster the main heat sink on here, the Accelero. So we're going to be dropping that on the Titan, uh, sorry, the GTX 1080 Ti, and then we're going to join the family there. So that's a 980 Ti. So for the thermal paste, I'm going to use some thermal grizzly. I like to call it a uh, thermal griswold. And this got sent in from a subscriber. He's actually uh, requested that I test this versus Liquid Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro. That came out wrong. But anyway, we're going to put those head-to-head -head on a D-littered 7700K clocked to like 5.1 gigahertz. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I trust that it's better because like a lot of people are saying it's better in the overclocking forums and stuff like that. So it says here, do not use with aluminium heat sinks. Yeah, it looks copper to me, so we're just going to go with that and put it on here. But we have to be very careful with this because if it leaks over or touches one of those little chips to the side of the die, then your card will short out. And I have to take it all off again and then clean it up, and it's just a waste of time. So we'll try and get it right the first time, and hopefully this works. So we've basically finished the layer here. It's a really, really thin layer. We had to clean up that spill before because it just came like shooting out, man. That was insane. Like, uh, you know, I'm used, to, I guess I'm just used to the liquid pro stuff, which is kind of really small and slow, but yeah, you get a lot more of this stuff. So it feels like exactly like liquid uh, pro, except you just get a lot more of it. So I guess that's the benefit with thermal grizzly, but that's just in terms of uh, like spreading the stuff and whatnot. So. It's time to put the cooler on, the dreaded task. This is going to be interesting. So I was going to mount this with no back plate since these little screws here actually lock into the existing heatsink via this method and then they screw on the back there. So one important thing that we're losing here is the, uh, I guess the rigidity of this uh, input output shield here. So it's sort of like flimsy. So with that said, we're going to have to put on the back plate somehow on the back of here. And so what I was thinking was, was using these screws and then putting the front there and then tying down the actual back plate with the cooler itself. So, cause that way when we mount it into a case, this isn't gonna break in the future. We can see there it's a little bit flimsy without any support, so. So there it is, there's the first stage now. We have put on half a back plate, so that's something you don't see every day. And we've got here the balance. Uh, when you put on these coolers, you have to make sure the balance is so right on this. So we're looking right in there and the heat sinks are kind of blocking it out on this side. But when we turn it around to this side, we can see that it's pretty level. I mean, that should be good. So you gotta make sure that this, this part here is level with the die on the PCB. So looks pretty good. This should be cooling really well.
So there you guys have it. The custom 1080 Ti Accelero does extremely well. Not only is it really quiet, but the temperatures are extremely low for a graphics card that puts out even more power than a 980 Ti overclocked. So this thing overclocked, I was getting around an extra 30 to 40 megahertz over the reference cooler and the temperatures were much lower. But even compared to something like a 1080 Strix, this thing was still performing better in my opinion. I mean, the Strix uses like 100 watts less and also the fans get a little bit noisier if we set the same custom fan profiles. But once you do set those custom fan profiles to around the same levels, then the temperatures are actually very similar. It's just that this thing is a lot quieter at those same custom fan profiles. So though kudos to Arctic for making a phenomenal aftermarket cooling solution. Now all these coolers here, Arctic don't even know that I'm making these videos. I've just bought all these myself. And the first time I came into one of these coolers was in Japan when I bought a GTX 780 which was like a junk cooler, but it still worked once I cleaned it all up. It had one of these included, and I was just blown away by the performance of these coolers. They're just simply phenomenal. But ultimately, the Accelero is just a really cool mod to do, though keep in mind you will void your warranty, so I don't recommend doing it unless you've got a bit of experience. And if you want to gain a bit of experience, maybe go into the used graphics cards and pick up something really cheap, get some practice like I've done in the past, and then you'll be on your way to getting much better temperatures and even better overclocks. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below what you think of the new Accelero in the family, and I'll be sure to catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Also, the 4K performance, the GTX 1080 had slightly higher clocks and it was around about a 25 to 33% gain in those three gains that I tested. So 1080 Ti is a legit graphics card, really beast, but of course it does come with that beastly price tag. Bah.